Hey, good morning and welcome back out to the garage. Um, you know, have you ever had one of those days where uh, you just kind of wish you could look out your window and see Doc Brown, uh, Christopher Lloyd, roll up in your driveway with the DeLorean and sort of, you know, give you an opportunity to go back in time? Maybe just a day, maybe a few days, maybe longer, sort of to right some wrong or fix some mistake? Well, I, so I would imagine that the answer to that question is, of course, a yes. I think we've all had those those days where we like to do that. Uh, I don't know if you're like me, you probably screw up every day in some form or fashion. <clears throat> but you know what uh, reality is? Is that we can't travel back in time, or at least if we can, I don't know about it. And so we have to uh, fix our errors and right our wrongs as best we can. Um, I know on cars that for sure happens um, just the other day I had uh, worked on our little corner uh, patch there on the door and uh, anyways I had a fail on it I it didn't turn out like I wanted it to it looked like it was going fantastic but I made some mistakes and some errors in there and you know what um, in doing a YouTube channel, I, I thought really my, my main goal here is just to sort of journal my progress on any sort of work I do uh, for my benefit or my kids, uh, whoever wants to come along for the ride. And um, part of doing that is journaling the bad along with the good. So uh, I am going to journal my fail here. Um, I'm going to include some clips from uh, us doing some work this weekend and um, you know maybe you might learn something maybe you uh, might learn what not to do uh, two mistakes I made was I decided to butt weld this which is usually the right way to do it but uh, you know I can't get behind very well to dolly out any sort of mistakes so what I did was I did that and I not only did that um, but in doing the butt weld, I thought I took my time, but apparently I didn't. So I rushed it, and it caused it to warp. And it warped kind of beyond uh, a way I think I can repair it. So anyways, that was mistake number one. Mistake number two, took out some of the, well, probably a little bit more metal uh, on the weld than I should have with a flat disc. I should have gone with a, a little... A little three inch um, cutting disc and just took my time and took that out that way we would um, have plenty of metal but I, I have the hunch I took more out than I should have so anyways uh, I don't want to keep going on but you know we make mistakes in life and the fact is today is a new day it's a new opportunity to fix what we screwed up and that's what we're gonna do we are going to keep pressing on forgetting what uh, happened and leave behind that and press on to the rest of our goal uh, I've already started making some um, <clears throat> another panel which is a little difficult to get those lines but we're gonna get there and we're gonna have fun doing it so here's just some clips of that we're back out here working on our patches for uh, the pasture side door of the Plymouth here uh, if you watched my last video uh, you'll see where I had cut out some sections from uh, a, an existing door that I had that had, had a little fender bender on. Well, I've been at work uh, sort of massaging those around to get the shape we need on our, uh, you know, doors here. So uh, let's take a look at what we did. Well, here's our piece for the front part of the door. Now, uh, what I did was, the whole reason I used this metal was because it had... Uh, the contour of the body line and you can see this crown here which is what kind of made me nervous about doing this type of patch um, um, ended up making a flange both here and this one was existing but I had to kind of mess with it a little bit uh, so the idea is to slide it right onto the door uh, and then you know make our welds here and here and that should take uh, care of most of that rot but yeah I was like I said I was a little bit worried because of the crown uh, you know, if it was just a flat line, it'd be a no-brainer easy, you know, make that flange and turn it in. But this, um, like I said, has that crown, and it's a little difficult to do it, but we were able to 
slowly work our way and the way we did that was um, of course um, I use my good old-fashioned um, W-shaped beam here the side beam and um, just a little piece of 14 gauge metal that I had scrapped and you can stick that thing in there and sort of work it down you can clamp it and work your way on up and um, makes it real nice where you can slide it on and then uh, at the end of the day use your hammer and dolly to to get that pinched in there when I originally cut these out I originally had cut this metal uh, quite a bit higher because I was originally planning on thought about bending this flange always up up into here because I had this little indention caused from uh, this guy whenever the our little roller or whatever went out but uh, I'm just I think what I'm gonna do is this is all really good metal in here and I'm just going to clean that up and do me some tack welds and build that up and shave it and I don't think that there's any reason to replace all that and so I wanted to because of the whole problem with the contours uh, there in the body line out and bending that flange I decided to take that um, you know go ahead below this body line because uh, it'll help us to keep from warping that at least I believe so anyways what we're gonna do we got this lined up here and I've already pre-marked it uh, but I'm gonna bring it over I'm gonna cut this down at a 45 degree angle cut all that stuff out first and then I'm gonna cut up here and just sort of forensically take out some of this stuff that way I can slide this on and test it for fit then I can cut what I need to there and then once all that junk is gone we'll clean up all this mess behind so it doesn't cause us grief in the future after a lot of uh, doing a little bit of cutting here and a lot of prying on the back because it's hard to get to we got this uh, old rusty place off now, as you can tell, uh, this is a little rough right here. So we're going to hit this thing with a flap disc really good, um, both sides. And then we're going to treat that for rust before uh, with a rust converter before we end up uh, putting our little patch on. But uh, essentially, you know, if you want to know kind of what we did, um, it's usually pretty nice, at least I found, that uh, I can't remember where I learned this, but uh, I put this on here and I, you know, made my marks with a marker sort of where to start out, and that was there and there. And I came in here and I cut this back, I set it at a 45, but it's more like a 30. Uh, and then took this other place out and then did the same thing there. You cut that out. So the idea is, is that you can butt it up against where you cut it, and this will lay over the top, and then I can go back in. Uh, with the uh, the cutting disc and cut right along that line and it should fall right into place giving us a good place to butt weld so it's nice and flat uh, but anyways let's see how that thing fits on there You gotta coax that on there. Which I guess you'd rather have it more so tight than loose. Making patches is a time consuming thing but it can be fun and if you let it be you can get nervous doing it because I know that I was a little bit nervous about uh, bending that flange there because I've never I've never done it quite like this with that aggressive a crown but you know what there's always a first alright I think that they've butted up on there pretty good yeah so there you go that still fits our body line nicely and like I said, we will um, we're gonna take this off here, of course, do our uh, flap disc and treating on the old nasty rust. Come back in and cut that. And we'll weld that thing in place. 
All right. I think the rest of that's going to be dealt with with a wire wheel to get all these rust out of these pits and we'll get her cleaned up and converted. Well, we came back in and uh, cut what we needed there out uh, once we had our little patch on there and it looks like it's going to fit pretty good. Uh, yeah. It'll go in further, but I'm only if I tap that with the uh, hammer. But anyways, uh, we kind of wire brushed that as best we can. So uh, hopefully we can use a good old-fashioned uh, rust converter, a rust encapsulator on that. And uh, that's about the best we can do with unless we replace that. Hopefully it won't, um, that may give us headache down in the future. Basically the same is true over here where I cut this out. Um, I left this in place for now. Uh, that way we could hold the shape, but uh, went in there and it was a lot worse than I was thinking. I mean, I don't have any rust holes. Uh, that's from the some trim we had. Uh, this being a Sebring Plus, it used to have trim right going along that body line. Anyways, um, gonna brush it down a little bit more. Uh, take out what we got to take out and uh, give it a little co coat of encapsulator. Let that set and then we'll call it a night. Alright, we got our coating of uh, rust encapsulator both here and down there. And um, But the only thing we can do now is uh, go on the house and uh, let her dry and tomorrow We'll get to welding. Um, you know, I'll tell you one thing that this uh, car is going to need. I opened up the door and uh, took off the door panels. I hadn't done that in probably 20 years. We're going to have to go through here and, um, you know, use our needle scaler and get some of that uh, insulation, that sort of thing, uh, out of there and go back, especially all the way down here and do a whole thing of. Uh, wire wheeling and uh, rust encapsulator there too. I mean I could have probably replaced all of this metal but it's really not in horrible shape so I would rather not go there. Um, really this framework was was really more of, of the issue than anything else and, and the, obviously the corner seat metal. So anyways let's let that dry and tomorrow we'll get back to welding. Well, we're back at it uh, next morning. Uh, looks like our uh, rust encapsulator is dried, so we have put our little patch panels back on the cars and uh, got them clamped down. So we're going to dig the welder out and get to tack welding. Well, I had just filmed uh, me tacking up this patch here, uh, but as it would turn out, uh, my uh, my welding wire and all that good stuff and my knees moved the camera slightly away so you didn't see nothing. Anyway, what we did, uh, you can see where we just tacked her up just a little bitty bit bit here. Uh, I've got my welder set up um, where I'm only going to be, uh, oops, see I'm doing it again, I'm moving it. Uh, I'm only going to be welding, even though this is 18 gauge, I'm shooting for more of setting it up like it's um, 20 to 22 gauge because I don't want to burn through this. It had a little bit more of a gap than what I wanted, so we're just going to easily 
it work its way up. So uh, we tacked this up and we walked away for a minute, let it cool off, and we're going to come back for another round. And that's really the I think usually the way that's the way I try to do it because I don't want to warp these panels. I've done it before and it's a mess. So uh, let's uh, get to round two. This would help if I put on my gloves. Might need those. Which, by the way, I need to get some more of because this tip is about shot. You still there? Yeah, there we go. Just little bitty bits here and there. It's all you need when it comes to sheet metal work. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and let that cool. I know that wasn't that much, but that's uh, that's really all you need to do to get this thing hot. So, I'm going to bounce over to uh, number two. Well guys, uh, I made a little rookie mistake here on our welding our other patch in. Let me show you what I mean. So yeah, I didn't have a very good clamping surface here on our butt weld. You know, I know a lot of times I like to do a flange, but I wanted to do a butt on this. And um, well, anyways, long story short, I used some of my magnets and some clamps down here. Uh, and so I, as I got to tacking away here, I didn't realize what was happening, but uh, started the panel started to cave in a little bit down there, and so I had. Uh, it just it just wasn't even with the body line, so uh, that wasn't going to work for me. So what I ended up doing was I forgot I had some of these guys, and I don't use them that often because I, like I said, I don't even like this gap. This is more of a gap than I usually like with a butt weld. But uh, since it is a door panel, I was able to barely get behind there and set this uh, little butt weld clamp up. So I went ahead and ground the existing spots and uh, we're gonna go back for another round let's uh, spot it up and uh, take those off that way we are reconciled in our rookie mistake but yeah I am definitely a rookie I'm no professional on this so these kind of things happen and that's how you learn well I think we redeemed ourselves here uh, those uh, butt weld uh, Clamps seem to help. So I've we got we've got the body line reestablished, and we got that together. So we're just going to take our time, not let it get too hot, and finish up the welds. We're about done up there. Um, going to hit it a couple more times and grind it down. Make sure we hadn't missed anything. Then we'll come back to this one. Well, we got all of our uh, welding done here. At least I think, unless we've got a. Uh, you know a pinhole or something which I think I might have one here in which case we'll fix that but I we just started um, grinding this or not grinding but using the flap disc to try to 
do that, but I'm trying not to get it too hot because I don't want to warp it because I made another rookie mistake and I did the one thing I didn't want to do. Uh, I don't know if you can tell right in there where my finger is. It has a slight bit of warpage right there. I uh, It's really aggravating. But I think what I can do once I get done in here taking the flap disc, cleaning that up, um, I might be able to take my stud welder in a couple of places. I, I think what it was, I had a big gap right there and I got in a hurry. And it doesn't take much to warp sheet metal, guys. It just really doesn't. Uh, but I got in a hurry and tried to fix that. Like I said, I, wouldn't, I was going to try to miss. But, uh, yeah, so it's concaved a bit. Um, it's not the end of the world, but like I said, I think we can take the stud, stud gun, pop a few studs in there, use this as, and I got a stud puller. I've, I've never showed you guys. I'm going to show you how to use that. But I think I could pull that out and save the day. We'll see. I don't think I have any issues on this line. I know the, looks like the TV screen <laughs> shows that we do, but I don't, I don't think it's warped, uh, which is good. So... Anyways, we'll finish it up. Uh, we got down here taken care of. Uh, for the most part, um, I still need to come back in and weld behind. Now I know that uh, I got a small little gap in there, but that is there is metal there. I don't want to take any more metal out of here than I have to. So I think it's at a point where we could take filler and uh, work it over and it would be okay. So. I'm, for the most part, happy with that. I don't feel any warpage there that I can tell. Um, that little high spot right there. I have to take that down with the flap disc a little bit more. Um, other than that, it's looking okay. Alright, looks like we got a high spot here. Low spot there. So I'm going to remember that. We got a half spot here, here, and here. Hook spot. Let's bring that out. Uh -oh. See, this is what I mean about having to be a contortionist to get back here. Right, I think I'm in the low. Hopefully, we can hold it. Nope, we can't. We still might have to get out the stud gun, but that's much better. Better than it was before. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. We got a high spot right here and probably right in here. And I I've already taken away so much uh, metal here that I don't want to do it anymore. I think it, it'll uh, make it worse for us. Um, I don't know. You know what? Kind of bummed me out a little bit, but that's all right. That kind of thing happens. But it was just the one thing I was trying to avoid was to do any sort of warpage. Um, that's why I like to do flange welds because you don't have that uh, problem near as much. Uh, I'm trying to rack my brain on how I want to fix that. Like I said, I think I may be able to take the stud welder and uh, pop some of that and fix that concave. I mean, I know that's what they make Bondo for, but we don't want to do that if we don't have to. 
So uh, I think what we're going to do, I'm going to, my kiddos want to go fishing. I think I need to step away for a minute and uh, go enjoy some time with them while, uh, while they want to enjoy it with me. And um, I'll think about how I want to fix that. I might be able to take some heat and fix that as well. But uh, it'll get fixed. And maybe tonight we'll get back on it and uh, keep on moving. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, we will get back to you whenever we uh, get to welding the metal bag. Have a great day. We'll see you.